ideal to film the making of a dress when you're really in a hurry to make it. And let's see how we get on. So I'm going to deal with the upper bodice part, not the sleeves and not the skirt at the moment. And first of all, I want to show you the pieces that I ironed interfacing onto to stabilise them and give them more body. So uh, that's my back. This is my front. This is the wrong side. Wrong side. Always <laughs> when you iron on your interfacings, it is a disaster if you don't put it on the wrong side. The wrong side being the right side. Interfacing on the front facing bit of my bodice. Interfacing on, you can put it on both. I've just put it on one piece of my collar interfacing also on the strip that is going to become the belt and I've put it on the full width of it because I need it to be quite stiff. Some other things to tell you about um, using a pencil which is very naughty and you also can't see it. I've put the the end of my dart, the point of my darts, and I've actually drawn lines and I'm just going to stitch along those lines. I'm in a big hurry. Uh, where else have I done that? I've done that on the back. So this is on the wrong side, yeah? So my waist darts at the back, I've got the, the end of the dart, whoops, I've got the end of the dart and then I've drawn down the lines where I've got to sew them and when I sew them I will fold them back fold them back follow my little notches at the end and I will finish at the dot you always finish at the end of your darts because really you're supposed to kind of run off into nothing that sort of sewing rule really. Now the other thing that I wanted to say was I've cut this piece on the cross because it stretches and I've hemmed one side of it because I'm going to be sewing it onto around the back neck just to sort of neaten off the back neck. Right so the first thing that I'm going to do and not necessarily show you is to stitch up all of my darts, wherever I've got darts on the bodice, I'm going to stitch them up. So I've done all my bust darts, I've pressed them, I've pressed them towards the side seams or towards the waist going down. I've also pressed this back, I don't know if I said that before because it just makes it easier for me later on and I've done the bust starts on the back. Now what we need to do is we need to match up our fabric right sides together. So I'm going to match up the shoulders. So this is for sewing up the shoulders. I'm going to match them up right sides together and do a seam allowance away. So I do them on both shoulders. So I've stitched up the shoulders and I've overlocked them and I've pressed them towards the back, okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to get your collar, put them both together, right sides, look, right sides together and stitch a seam allowance away from the edge and then trim it back to about, I don't know, a millimetre. Once you've stitched your collars right sides together, trimmed them back, it's up to you if you want to do a top stitch or an under stitch. I've decided to do a top stitch quite, oh, I don't know, a centimetre and a half away. Um, it's a good idea to stitch along the edge there to keep the pieces together for the way that we're doing the collar today.
Now we get the front and back pieces that have been stitched together. I'm going to line up my centre notch of the back with the centre notch on my collar and I'm just going to sort of roughly start pinning. Now actually it is, I'm not doing it now because I'm in a bit of a hurry but it is a good idea to do a stay stitch just a bit in on the stitch line so imagine I haven't got my collar it's a good idea to do a stay stitch don't go backwards and forwards and use quite a large stitch to go around the edge of your neckline because sometimes when the collar you know needs a little bit of uh, the neckline when it needs a little bit of easing to fit the collar you can do that just a little bit but not too much right we're not doing that now though I'm going to stick I'm going to pin the center back I'm going to pin where I want my collar to finish and then I should do it this way really and then I'm going to start pinning to make the neckline fit, which it does fit. <laughs> but if you pin where you want it to go and where you want it to, to finish, so it does fit, but if you do the pinning where you're going and where you start, then... Um, you can sort of ease it a little bit. So back around this way. So can you see that? So I've pinned just one side. That's going to finish there like that. And then I'll pin the other side and then I'm going to sew all around the neckline a seam allowance away. My facing is open. I've attached the collar and I've stopped a little bit away from the end, like half an inch, centimetre or half, away from where I will be folding back the facing right sides together and then turning it around but I don't want to do that yet because I need to look at this stuff here so this is where our, our strip of bias binding comes in and I don't quite need as much as all of that so I'm going to chop it off right so what we're going to do is so that's the inside of the back Hopefully my head isn't in the way. That's the inside of the back. That's the collar. So I'm going to put it, look, right sides together. So you can see the inside because that's shiny. And I'm just going to sew it a little bit past the shoulder there. So I'll let it, I'll start a little bit in and I'll let that just continue. So I'm starting a little bit past the shoulder and I'm coming along like that and I'll finish a little bit past the shoulder but I'll leave a little tail. Dress is getting to me. <laughs> you have to do this uh, folding the facing back first before you add the bias binding at the back. I stitched all the way there and then I folded back this facing a little bit so when I turn it around hopefully Let's do the thing I always say, fold back your seam allowance and then push your corner out. Whew. Okay, so do you see that? So that, so then that makes that all nice and neat when you stay stitch it onto there. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. We've got neatly finished and faced um, front opening. <laughs> we've got neatly finished by binding at the back. Uh, I'm not going to do the buttonholes yet. I'm going to do the sleeves. So I am slightly running out of time, so I'm going to do the sleeves now and I like to, not always, but often, attach the 
the sleeves with my work still in a, a two-dimensional way yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my sleeve I'm going to do a large stitch around the head of the sleeve so I can gather it up and then I'm going to fit it into the armhole on both of them overlock it and then we'll move on to the next stage but I haven't got much time so I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to share with you but let's see what happens but I just thought I'd put it on here to show you where we're at I haven't stitched up the sides I've done the sleeve in the armhole I actually did the buttonholes so you're gonna to have to watch how to do buttonholes uh, we have a video I can put it in the description but this is where we're at but I want to show you what it looks like when it's opened out so can you see how it's kind of logical or good doing it this way and then when we first attach the skirts onto the back and on the front then all I'm going to do is just flop it over and I always match up the armpits go down the sleeve and then down the sides but I think it's so much easier that way so I'm back we got a little bit of an extension so I can show you some more bits of the process but I stayed up last night a bit late and did this so have a look at what I've done so far I did the buttonholes I stitched the buttons on uh, what else oh yes right so I made up I made up the box pleat top stitched it with the same seam allowance that I used on the collar so that it ties in uh, yeah so I thought I can show you how I did this box pleat on the skirt So let's take it back a bit. So this is the inside so far. Now I always notch when I'm doing a sewing project. I always notch the center and I did it down on the hem. So I folded my fabric in half for the skirt front. Yeah, folded the fabric in half, pressed where the center was and then where I had my notch for where I need to do the uh, stitch line for the box plate, I then folded that back and pressed that. So that gave me a straight line. So I measured how far down I had to stop and then just sort of pinned it to there. Then, <laughs> then, I needed to create the box pleat effect. So again, I had a little notch to signify the center. This is actually the back. So I lined up the center of the box pleat with there, and then that gave me the measurements that were required on each side. So, put the pin there. Pin there. that's very effective isn't it now I'm going to do that top stitch thing where I kind of come down come across and come up and then I'll attach it to the front bodice so this then becomes that bottom part there so I have to attach it right sides together to the front bodice so we do it like this not front bodice back bodice I've already done the front bodice so I'm going to attach the skirt onto the back bodice so 
so that is my front have a look at what we did so you see it's very simple I just attached it in a two-dimensional way onto the front so that's when I did the front and then I overlocked it okay so we're going to do the same thing but with our with our back piece and I'll begin by lining up the centre notch on the back bod bodice with turn it around the centre notch on the back skirt and the fabric is right sides together. Now before I do that I'm just going to overlock the side seams on my back skirt because I haven't done it yet. So that's my back bodice pinned to the skirt right sides together and now I'm going to sew a seam allowance away going straight along there and then I'll overlock it. So look how lovely and clean that looks. So now all I have to do is I've got to line up the side seam and stitch the side seam on one side where I'm going to have the zip, stitch it with the zip distance away, put the zip in, then close up this seam from the sleeve down the bodice and then on the other side you just sew it all in one but line up all your key bits and then you're really nearly done. So when you're doing a lapped zip and when you're doing all zips it's usually easier if they're longer than you need them to be and then you trim it off and finish it off at the end. So decide how long your zip is going to be and put your fabric right sides together and start to sew your side seam. Now my seam allowance is really enormous so I'm starting in there. So backwards and forwards to close off the seam and sew all the way down your side seam. When you do work like this it's so much easier if you do it on a like hard surface, a magazine or a book or obviously a table um, because then when you pin into it it's just easier. So line up your zip. Now this side is where we stitch it from the wrong side and then in a minute the lapped bit will be lined up and top stitched on but we're not at that stage yet so I'm going to flop it over make sure that my work is lined up properly probably undo the zip and just start pinning wherever it is that you want it to go now this is one of those situations where you know I would use double-sided sticky tape or anything to make it simpler but I've got a brilliant new sewing foot and I don't think I need to so now because I pressed my seams open before it basically gave me a line if you see it's pressed, it gave me a line of, you know, where on the fabric it needs to be lined up on the zip. So that is a, a helpful tip. Now I've opened it beyond where I need it to be because that also makes it a lot easier. Anyway, I'm not going to pretend that I like putting zips in. Don't um, stretch the fabric. So now I'm going to sew with my brilliant new sewing foot all the way down there. So can you see where my needle is? Because it's got like an adjuster thing on the back so I can slide the foot. So look how lovely and close it is to the zip and my press line. Backwards and forwards. So much easier. 
so I can get really close. So I'm just kind of following that press line. My zip is open, bigger than the hole or the gap. And then I'll stop just where the stitch line of the seam is. So look, I was able, I went a bit wonky there, I was able to get pretty close. I think I could go closer still. So the next bit is about lining it up exactly. That is, you know, that's pretty important. So you've got to close the zip and get it in position first. And then start making your way down, making sure that it's equally lapped all the way down and that you're not going to stitch through your zipper thing. And then when you get to the end of where you want to stop, you'll come across and go backwards and forwards a couple of times. But this is the bit that needs to line up properly. So when you sew it, I recommend you undo the zip so it's nice and flat. So I have to relocate my zipper foot now. So I adjust the, the foot because it has a slidey thing at the back. So I just, I want the needle to go to the other side of the foot. So I'm moving the foot by undoing the knob at the back, making sure it's not going to bash on anything. And then I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to open up the zip now because it's going to get in the way. No I'm not. I'm going to close the zip now because it will get in the way. Turn my work around, keep it flat and come across a couple of times. Right, so I think that that is good enough. Can you see? So now we, all we do is we just flop our work over. We put the fabric right sides together, match up the armpits, go from the armpit down to the zip but I'm not going too far because I want a gap I'm going to put a hook in there and then the armpit down the inside seam of the sleeve right I've jumped ahead a little bit so I've left a, a gap above the zip stitched up the side seam I also hemmed the sleeve now the way in which you do that is you turn your sleeve inside out and then you fold back your hem, okay, so you'll have it inside out, fold back your hem and then you must take, you, you need like the, you must take the box off your machine so that you can slide your sleeve in and then you turn it, turn it, turn it. So, but look, that looks very neat, doesn't it? So now, all I have to do is close off the other side. I love how neat it looks. So, we've stitched up those side seams, both of them, and done the, the turn ups on the sleeves and stay stitched it on the inside. So, all we've got left to do is the belt and the hem. So, I am done. That's it. One finished or two finished. Made in Dagenham red 60s Bieber style dress. So, all I have to do now is the belt. And that was that strip of fabric with interfacing. You fold it right sides together. Start in the middle. Sew along one edge and the end leave a gap to turn it through and go down the other edge and close off the other end. 
you turn it the right way round, put Velcro on the back, oh press it, put Velcro on the back and then put your two little buttons, well they're big buttons, on the front. Have a look at this, this is the belt, that's the Velcro which I think is fine and then the other end of it buttons, stitch the buttons on so what happens is they put it on oops, like that and it doesn't come undone and it is obviously adjustable then So chain belt loops, if you watch our video on how to make a Louis Vuitton style skirt using an Ikea blind, yeah I know, sounds weird, it does look nice though, it's from like, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago, 8 years ago, you can see how to do these chain belt loops, so that goes in there, right so and then it just does up here. Hurrah! I am so glad that we have finished. Finished! I'm tired! So that is it. He's got his belt. Belt. It's shorter, which is the reason why I had to make another one. Uh. Yep. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.